Rocking on Spectacle. I'm Ian Jordson. I'm Mike Gamble. I'm Nick Kinzel. And this is a very special edition of the Kinzel's Classroom. We're back, so I'm going to toss it right to the to the professor. El Professor. Right. El Professor is back, baby. It is the first episode of the season of the Kinzel's Classroom from the Auto Club Race Weekend. So just a reminder of how we do this. We're going to have one overachiever of the week, one underachiever of the week, and then five guys. We're going to see if they make the grade. So here we go. So first off, the overachiever of the week, in my mind, is Tyler Reddick with an 11th place finish oh, for yeah. Richard Childress Racing because Tyler Reddick is a rookie, and he just absolutely nailed the restarts all day long. He really had a fast car. He was, yeah. up, he was up in the top 10 for a little bit. I was really impressed with this kid. Right now, he's my leading rookie for the Rookie of the Year right now of how we're going yeah. so far. Yeah, so I'd say so. I'd have, to, I'd have to say Tyler Reddick is with an 11th place finish is your rookie and overachiever of the week. I would tend to agree. One of the most in, uh, most impressive thing really coming from here, what we know about Auto Club is the restarts can get really wiry here. Yeah. You've got a lot of racetrack to use. you got to be creative on the restarts. We saw guys going down to the flat spots. We saw guys trying to get up to the wall. We saw everything in between. The fact that he nailed them as a rookie in cars that drove nothing like the Xfinity cars he drove last year is pretty impressive. Right. I would say a P11 finish for that team. We saw some of the struggles they had last year. Again, weren't necessarily Daniel Hemrick's fault, but that team did struggle. Mm -hmm. uh, getting a P11 there, that, that's a big result for the eight. Oh, yeah, that's huge to see from an RCR car. Yeah, absolutely, from a Richard Childress standpoint, too. Cause yeah. I don't remember where Austin Dillon finished, but yeah, Tyler Reddick showing up being like, Hey, I'm the new kid in town, boys. Yeah. And then, He's RCR's new golden boy. Oh, I have to tend to agree on that one. So, underachiever of the week, i got to give it to the 14 car, Clint Boyer. 23rd yeah. place finish. This week should could have and should have been a promising week for this 14 car. He's right. been struggling so much the past year, and even to start this year off as well. He started on the pole in this race. And just really just did not take off from the get-go. Really lost his speed. This is why it's tough for me to pick up a guy like Clint Boyer because he can start up front, but he doesn't typically race up front. So it's really disappointing to see. And he brought out the caution, ruining his day. So I have to give Clint underachiever of the week. Yeah, again, I tend to agree here too. Um, Clint Boyer's kind of been like a box of chocolates. You never know what you're going to get. Exactly. Uh, took the pole, won the, won the pole by a whisker from yeah. uh, Jimmy Johnson. And you, you, like you said, you just never know what you're going to get with him. He could have uh, easily brought a car and just dominated and ran away with it. He could easily do what he did and drop back to 23rd from the pole. Really kind of disheartening to see because, once again, he's a very likable guy. Everything yeah. he's got going on Barstool Sports Absolutely. now, having the mm -hmm. podcast with uh, El Prez and those guys for Rubbins Racing. Yeah. Talk about you know him bringing in the, the new uh, Barstool car he's going to run this year, too. The yeah, Dragon, potential, yeah, the dragon yeah. car, potentially. <laughs> I think it's got it yeah. absolutely happening. Yeah, because so. uh, Portnoy said, see you in Dagan with a picture of that car. <laughs> oh, so. Yes. Oh, <laughs> old but. Jeff Gluck's not going to be happy about that. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I saw it, too. No, he Gluck wants the it. money for he it. He loved it. Oh, yeah. he, he's like, where's the money for it, man? <laughs> yeah. I write a story, and then I get a race car for it. Yeah, right. <laughs> Fairy tales turn into race cars, apparently. Only in that. Car. Yeah, right. But uh Boyer, yeah, it, it sucks to see him like that. You know, he gets the pole and he just you know, he leads like one or two laps and then he just falls back. I it's, don't even remember if he even led a lap. Yeah, well either way, it was not a good start for him and I hope this isn't this isn't how his season goes. Why the struggle is gonna continue for this car is really what's gonna happen because he this is a contract year for him as well, so yeah. Yeah. we'll just have to see. But we'll, we'll see how that goes. Now it's time for who makes the grade. I've got five drivers in mind. So I'm going to list them off for you. And I want to hear your guys' opinion on their weekend at Auto Club and give them a grade for me. All right. Number one, the 48 car, Jimmy Johnson. He brought it home P7. He was respectively in the top 10 all day. Yeah. That's a solid B plus A minus for me because we're really starting to see. Old Jimmy Johnson starting to creep back in the picture here. Yeah. Like you've said yeah. it best before, don't don't discount J Jimmy Johnson anywhere. He can just come back and do it. So I, I yeah. have to say he had a very solid weekend in his final race at his home track. I think you hit it right, right, perfect. B-plus weekend for uh, the 48 team and Jimmy Johnson. Being his hometown track, he put on a very good display. Mm -hmm. Fought for the lead at points in the race, which there were some ridiculous lead changes. Oh, like yeah. Yeah. Lead battles, which were incredible to watch. And he was in the thick of it a bunch of times during the race. Right. Didn't come home with the win, which he would have loved. Would have been a nice story for NASCAR. But you know what? Still a strong day. He's showing he might still be a contender in this last year. Exactly. I mean, I, I'd probably give Jimmy Johnson an A- just for everything that he's been through the past three years or so. You know, he's just been struggling. You know, 
We don't want to see seven time go out like this, but man, he has really put on some speed yeah. for the first not three races. Not done yet, boys. And not done yet, but I think he's just getting started this yeah. season, man. I I really think he's going to do well and great race, seventh place, yeah. fantastic, a minus. All right, number two, Martin Truex Jr. P14. I give him a C because Martin Truex was old Martin Truex. I mean, he started at the back of the field. And he was able to rally his way up. He was just whiny, whiny, whiny all day long. And at the end, he just kind of faded back because of an ill-advised pit stop that's really set him back. So that's just a C day because Mark Truex Jr. was my pick to win this race. Yeah. And I was really disappointed to not see him up there in the end. Yeah. Right. For me, it's a C, C minus. Martin Truex Jr. and that team haven't seemed to gel so far this year yet and having to figure it out. We've also seen, as Stuart Haas did last year, the Joe Gibbs Racing team so far this year has struggled. Yeah. They're not where they want to be. They're not on par with the top teams in NASCAR right now. That doesn't mean that's what's going to happen yeah. as the season goes on. But as at this point in the season, they look a step behind the Fords. They look a step behind the Chevys, specifically Hendrick Motorsports and Penske Racing, right. which they do not want to be behind. They do not want to dig themselves that hole. Um, we saw him get all mad again on the radio, which we touched on in mm -hmm. previous shows. Um, just looking like they're lacking a lot of continuity on that 19 team. I'm going to go with a C minus. Yeah, I would say C minus as well. He started in the back. He moved his way up to the front for a little bit, and then he just continued to struggle. He had that one. He had the pit uh, before the race ended, which kind of screwed up his finish. So C minus because we know Truex can do a hell of a lot better at California. Yeah, absolutely. absolutely, he's won there before. So. Yep. All right, number three. The 21 car, back to Benedetto, P13, I give him a B for it because I give him a B for it. It's not an A effort because Matt Benedetto in the beginning of the race was a top five race car. Yeah. And just all day long, I was reading Wood Brothers tweets saying, like, we don't know what happened to this car. Like, as the race went on, they just could not get it back. They just kept dropping backwards and backwards and backwards, all the way down to, like, 20th at one point. I was, yeah. I was really disappointed with that, but at the end, they said Matt had a hot rocket again, able to rebound to a 13th place day. I just – I give him a B because he's off to a terrific start to the season. Yeah. He's still eighth in points, and this team is looking really good early on. Yeah, I think B is a very fair grade. Like you said, it was really weird to see because it wasn't like he just had a long run it wasn't car. Like, it wasn't yeah. like he had a short run car. Mm -hmm. He was strong, and then he just out of really nowhere, fast just in faded. That first stage, right? Halfway in the second stage, he started to drop. And the weird thing is, you know, going back and looking at Twitter, and going back and looking at some of the things that were reported, you don't see any evidence of there being like an ill-advised adjustment yeah. or something like that. They're, that they, they, they tried to make a swing and it didn't work. Yeah. So, but um, yeah, looking at the year as a whole for them so far, you know. Like I said, we had a lot of couple of early results, which maybe can skew some things. We don't really know what they're going to be yet. I think they're probably going to be a stronger team than some people do realize. Right. I would say it's probably about a B day. Yeah, I'd give them a B as well. Uh, just to see the kind of performance and speed that Matt Benedetto has had so far this year with the 21 team. Yeah. And for him to just, you know, 14th place finish, you know, that's... No, that's still decent for that team, but right. you know he can do something a hell of a lot better. Um, I know he was not happy with that. Oh no, yeah. not at all. Like he if knew, he was still he with knew, like the thirty-two or something, he'd yeah. be like, "Oh, this is fourteenth place but finish." Matt the Benedetto yeah. had a top five car, mm -hmm. right, early on in that race. So it's just it's a little disappointing to see as a Benedetto fan, but. Hey, if I get to be disappointed about 13th place finishes, I'm moving up there. That's oh, yeah. I, I, was, I was literally just going to say, but boys, if, if Matt Benedetto can be disappointed by being in 13th place, that just shows you where the expectations for this 21 team will be this yeah. year. Absolutely. So, number four, the 18 car, Kyle Busch. Yes, he finished second. It's still a B-minus day for me because Kyle Busch, he, he was around the back mark of the top 10 most of this yeah. race. He, the Toyotas are just really struggling right now. And Kyle Busch was able to creep his way up to second. Thanks to Ryan Blaney tire failure there at the end, but just I don't think Kyle Busch and he even said it. You even said it that he's not there yet. These Toyotas are not there yet for the raw speed. So I am a solid B minus for just creeping his way up for a second place finish. Yeah, the second place saves the B minus for me. Yeah, like Martin Truex, we talked about same reasoning. Just struggled so far this year with uh, the manufacturer, as we've seen. He doesn't even have the same excuse as Martin Truex are working with a new crew chief. Right. They've been together for years now. They've won championships together. Um, he doesn't have that. So I don't know what's going on there. I don't know if that's something that they need to look at as an organization or what, but they need to get going. 
You know they'll start going yeah. to it. I mean, it's Joe Gibbs Racing. They're still probably going to be. They're sp- still probably going to come out on top this season with yeah. the most wins. But uh, for Kyle Busch, I got to give him probably a B just for struggling all day, and then you know he finally made his way back up to second at the end of the race. So, you know, decent day for him. Yeah. I, I wouldn't give him uh, anything less than a B. Yeah, but he's Kyle Busch, and he's still going to be pissed off a second. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Man, hates to lose. Yeah, <laughs> he even seems pissed off when he wins sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> the championship, he's just kind of like, huh, got to give it to my guys. I want to change yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right, last guy on the list is uh, 12 car, Ryan Blaine, with a 19th place finish. I want to hear Mike's first. I'm going to go with a solid B because, again, we looked at the way he ran all race. Second in stage one, win stage two, has either the best or are the second best car on the racetrack, lap in and lap out. Has a tire go down, that's not his fault, not the team fault, nothing you can do about that. Mm -hmm. Sometimes that's the way the brakes go. Accrues a bunch of stage points, gets a a playoff point as well, sets himself up to still be the points leader. Um, Unfortunately, sometimes things like that don't work out for you. They did everything they could to put themselves in a good position there at the end of the race. Um, barring that tire not going down, he's coming home second. We're right. probably talking about a B plus, A minus kind yeah. of day for the 12 team. So if something that happened that they can't control kind of changed their destiny for the race. So hard for me to really put too much of that on them. They're ri- right where they need to be, really. Okay. Yeah, I, I also have to give him a B because the most important thing, he's walking out of Fontana, going into Phoenix as the points leader. Right. And I still think he's one of the strongest cars yeah. uh, this season so far. So. Yeah. Uh, yeah, like you said, it was just unfortunate what happened with the tire. It's unfortunate what happened with the pit call last week. It's just, these are these are going to go away. Yeah. He's going to win races. He's going to be strong all season. And, yeah, he could really be a threat for that championship when we come back here in the fall. So, everything's good for Blaney. Take, let's all take it easy. Yeah. Yeah. A nice B for Ryan Blaney. Yeah, yeah I got to give uh, Redneck Mamba a solid A. <laughs> <laughs> Before you keep going, I got to say, I absolutely love that. I need that, I need that on a T-shirt. Yeah. <laughs> Mamba, Ryan Blaney with a picture of like Jack Daniels in his hand or something. Yeah. Like that. <laughs> but uh, I gotta give him a solid A. I mean, he was running up front all day. He collected very good stage points. Yeah. So uh, and you know nothing that he could control with that tire going down. So I still gotta give him an A, even though you know yeah. he finished what, what was it, fourteen, nineteenth. Yeah, okay. 19th. Still A effort for him. Yeah. Without a doubt. Right. right. And just to piggyback off you really quickly, too, and I think that's something that we're seeing being more and more apparent now. It's not even so much about where you finish the yes. race as much as it is about getting those stage points. Right. Point he did stage, a great job of that again point. today. Um, all year. Every race, even, you know, he had the fall off at the end of the Phoenix race where he ended up coming home 11th, but he got stage points in stage one and two. Yeah. So that's what, was it? what you do. Second in stage one, one stage two. Yeah. yeah. Great day for him overall. Well, all five of our drivers... Had passing grades, so everybody made the grade. Every, so yeah. we're off to a good start. Yeah. Uh, you need to take us home, Ian. All right, guys. So thanks for watching the Stock Car Spectacle. So I'm Ian Jordson. I'm Mike Gamble. And I'm Nick Kinzel. Guys, make sure to follow us on Twitter, Instagram. Make sure to listen to us on Spotify and Anchor if you don't want to watch us on YouTube. And make sure to follow our friends at Ashland Heddens Racing. So thanks for watching, guys. 